Hello coders, Synthetic Programming here with another video for you guys today. I really like plants and I also really like data. So today we're going to be building a garden weather station that monitors the temperature and the humidity using an Arduino and then passes that data into a website using sockets. That may sound complicated, but it is a quick project. We're going to work on it together. And if this sounds interesting to you, please stick around and let's get started building. To build this project, you are going to need a servo motor, six wires, an Arduino microcontroller, and a wire to power and program the Arduino, a breadboard, and a DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. I made a small paper cover for my servo motor and attached it with sticky tack. It just has three labels on it, 60 degrees Fahrenheit, 75 degrees Fahrenheit, and 90 degrees Fahrenheit. This will be our little analog thermometer. The first thing you're going to want to do is plug in your DHT11 sensor into the breadboard. The DHT sensor has three pins. The first pin is usually ground, the middle pin is data, so the pin that transmits the actual data. And then the third pin is the voltage in, so the power for the sensor. So those three pins are going to be all we're going to need for this project. You're going to want to start by plugging in three wires to the three pins on your DHT sensor. I'm using red for voltage, green for data, and then black for ground. After doing that, you're going to want to plug the black wire into your ground pin on the Arduino. Red for the DHT sensor goes into the 5 volt power supply, and then the data should go into pin 2 of the Arduino. Then grab your servo motor, connect the control pin of the servo to pin 4 on the Arduino. Red for power goes into the 3.5 volt power supply, and then the black wire goes into another one of the ground pins. I found this little planting pot that I'm going to use to store the electronics, so I passed the power and programming cable for the Arduino through the bottom of it. And now you can see that I'm plugging in the Arduino and storing the electronics inside the little planting pot. Uh, it's not going to be the prettiest thing, but it'll definitely blend in in a shed. Next, I grabbed a small rock, and I'm just putting the servo with the little temperature dial on top of that rock with some sticky tack. Now it's time to plug it in and start programming the microcontroller. Now that everything's assembled, before we start programming, I just wanted to take a quick break to say that 98.5% of my viewers are not subscribed. So if you like what you see and you're into these programming and making videos, please definitely subscribe and then hit that notification bell so you know when I post other stuff like this. Okay, that was a quick pause. Let's get into programming the Arduino itself. Okay, so now that all of our components are assembled, we can start programming our microcontroller. So the microcontroller is an Arduino Uno. Uh, we're gonna use that Arduino to get all the data from the humidity and temperature sensor, and then we're gonna send that data over serial to use later. We're also gonna use the Arduino to control the little servo dial that tells us what temperature it is on that little analog dial that we created, the one that's sitting on the rock. Okay, so all of this code that I'm gonna show you is on GitHub, the link is in the description, but I'm gonna go through it line by line so you can pause the video and program it yourself. And I'm also gonna show you how to get the library that we need. So up at the top here, we need to include two libraries, the DHT library and the servo library. The servo library should come with the Arduino environment here, uh, but DHT we're gonna to have to install manually. If you go to sketch, include library, manage libraries, it's gonna open up the window that allows us to download the Arduino community libraries. We can go up here and say DHT, hit enter, and then you're gonna see the DHT sensor library by Adafruit down here. That's the one you want to install. I've already installed it. So after you install it, you can just hit close. And now we can use this library, the DHT library. After that, we're gonna to want to instantiate our servo. So we start that up here. Down here, we define the servo pin as four because we attached our servo control wire to pin four of the Arduino. We're gonna define the DHT pin as two because we took the data connection of the DHT sensor and we attached it to pin two of the Arduino so we can read in that data. And we also define the DHT type as a DHT11. So I'm using a DHT11 sensor, as I mentioned before. Um, some of you might have a DHT22 sensor if you've bought an electronics kit. Uh, electronics kits come with both DHT11 and DHT22. There's some other DHT types out there, but those are the two major types that you're going to see. Uh, so I'm working with a DHT11, so I set this to DHT11. We instantiate the DHT sensor. 
with the pin that we set uh, for the data and then the type of DHT sensor that it is. After we set up all of the definitions up here and instantiate the DHT sensor and the servo, we're gonna move down to our void setup. So in void setup, we're gonna run all the code that starts up the Arduino. Uh, here, we're gonna begin on serial port 9600. That's where we're gonna send all of our temperature and humidity data. After that, we attach the servo motor to the servo pin that we set above. That's just gonna allow us to control it through that pin. We're gonna write two to the servo motor. This servo that I'm using can go between zero and 180 degrees. So setting it to two degrees just points it generally to the right. And then when we get down to the main loop, uh, it can point wherever the temperature uh, ratio tells it to point, okay? So after that, we're gonna serial.println and then DHT11 test. That's just gonna send over the serial port uh, that we're running DHT11 test um, it's just going to tell us that the code is working and that we can send data over the serial port. Next, we're going to dht.begin. Uh, that just starts up our DHT sensor. Next, down in the void loop, so the main loop of our program, we're going to create three float variables. So the first one is going to be the humidity. We get that from dht.readHumidity. Uh, next, T is the temperature in Celsius, that's going to be dht.readTemperature. And then F is the temperature in Fahrenheit, that's dht.readTemperatureTrue. If you add true to dht.readTemperature, it measures in Fahrenheit for you. So next, we just check and make sure that all of those numbers exist. If for some reason one of them is not a number or doesn't exist, it will avoid the entire program crashing um, by returning. Okay. So next, what we want to do is we want to calculate the position of our little dial. So our dial goes between 60 degrees Fahrenheit and 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so what this line of code does is it pretty much finds exactly where it should point. How many degrees should it set the servo motor to? And then it points it there. So if it's 60 degrees Fahrenheit, the servo will point all the way to the right at zero degrees. If the temperature is 90 degrees Fahrenheit, then it'll point all the way to the left at 180 degrees, and then right down the middle um, at 75 degrees, it'll point at 90 degrees, so directly up, okay? So then, right after we calculate that ratio, we actually servo.write ratio. So we just send the servo motor to point in the direction that we've calculated, okay? Below that, we're also calculating the heat index. So the heat index, think of that as the temperature that it feels like. So let's say that outside it's 75 degrees Fahrenheit, but the humidity is at 50%. What the heat index does is it takes the humidity into account and then tells you the temperature that it feels like, uh, which could be different than the temperature that it actually is. Maybe it's 75 degrees Fahrenheit outside, but it feels like 80 because it's a very humid day. Okay, so that's what the heat index is. So we're gonna calculate the heat index there. And then below here, all of these serial print lines are us printing the data. Now you're gonna wanna type them out exactly like I have them here. And the reason for that is we are gonna make a website next, our little web page, sorry, that just takes in the serial data and displays it. The way that I've written the serial prints here, uh, it, it produces the perfect sort of data export that we can then take in on the uh, on the website and then parse to put into our web page. Okay, so if you're going to be using the web page code that I created, uh, that's on the GitHub, you're going to want to write it exactly like this. Okay. Next, we just delay for five seconds, and then the loop runs again. Now that we've finished going through this code and we've uploaded it to the Arduino we can actually go to tools, serial monitor, and we can check to make sure that it's working. So here we see DHT11 test. We see the humidity, the temperature, and the heat index coming in, and it's coming in every five seconds and it updates. So that's exactly what we wanna see, and that's on COM3. Now, the reason I'm noting that this is on COM3 is because we're gonna need that in a little bit. Okay, so here we are in Visual Studio Code. I have the files here from the GitHub project. Uh, again, the link is in the description for all of this code. What you're gonna wanna do once you get these four files from the GitHub is you're gonna have them in a folder. 
you're going to open them up in Visual Studio, open up a new terminal, and just type npm install. What that's going to do is it's going to grab all of the dependencies that we need for this code to work. Okay, so let me quickly go to server.js. This is the main file that has most of the code that we're going to need. Uh, and how this works is this. First, up here, we're including HTTP so we can actually host uh, our web page on a local server. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to get uh, FS. This is our file system uh, reader. And we're going to set var index, so a variable called index, is equal to fs.readfilesync index.html. Okay? So that's actually getting the index.html file that we have over here and just loading that in as a variable that we can use in this code here, okay, on the server side. So next, we're going to use serial port. So var serial port is requiring the library serial port that you should now have if you just did npm install. Parsers are started here as well. What these parsers do is they actually allow us to read that data that's coming over the serial port. And remember I said you have to remember and note what uh, port is being used on your actual computer. I said mine was COM3. COM3 is going to be needed right here. So new serial port slash COM3. And then all of this stuff here is just some configuration. Okay. So this is some pretty complicated code. Uh, it's a little bit above the scope of this video, but just know that what this does is it allows you to read the data that's coming from the Arduino over serial port COM3. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go and port dot pipe the parser. Parser is up here. Okay. And now we can actually start with the app. And so this is what's going to actually load up the web page for us. Okay. So var app, we make a variable called app. It's HTTP that we imported above dot create server. And then it's going to send text.html information. It's going to send that data uh, from index.html to the browser, and then it's going to end. Okay. It's going to be on port 3000. We're going to use that a little bit later. And then we use IO from socket.io to actually start up our socket. So what the socket allows us to do is have a live connection to the data so that our app on the other side, so our web page, is going to be constantly updating every time the data updates by having the socket connection open. Okay. So again, all of this code is available on GitHub. I know I went through it pretty quickly and that it's a little bit complex. Again, it's above the scope of this video. Uh, if you'd like, I can make another tutorial where I go more in depth uh, to this, but I'm just going to leave it at that for this video and we'll move on to index.html. In index.html, I've set up just a normal HTML5 file. Uh, in here, I have a lot of styling and stuff. So you, again, you're going to want to just copy this from the GitHub. But what this code pretty much does is here, we're going to have three boxes in the middle of our screen. And the three boxes are going to have the humidity, the temperature, and what it feels like. So what the temperature feels like, that's the heat index. Okay. Uh, and then down here, we have a little script that again, opens up that socket connection. It then goes through, it actually gets the humidity, the temperature, and the heat index uh, from all of the different, remember I said I was printing the data in a very particular way. This splits the data by equal sign, and then it grabs the exact piece of the data that it wants to display, okay? So here we have our humidity, our temperature in Celsius, temperature in Fahrenheit, heat index in Celsius, and heat index in Fahrenheit. And then we're going to take all of that and we pass it into those divs that we created above. If you want to now run this and actually make it work, what you're going to do is type npm start. It's a little funny that it was running down there. Now here you're seeing that it started our node server, but what we're going to wait for is for it to say that it's actually listening, uh, and it's going to say node is listening. Why is it going to say that? Well, over here, I set it up so that once it actually starts up the socket, it will say node is listening. Okay, so I've opened up a browser now. I'm going to go to localhost 3000. Remember, we've set this to listen on port 3000, so that's where it's going to be. 
when I hit enter, it says node is listening. The humidity, the temperature, and the feels like is all here. I can make that a little bigger so you can see. And now it tells you all of the data that's coming directly off the Arduino uh, here on a web page. And so that was our goal. And so now we can safely say that we're getting all of our data live over serial and we're displaying it on a web page. Now you can see the garden monitor that we built working in its natural habitat. That little dial tells us the temperature. And if you look at the computer screen, it tells us the humidity, temperature, and the heat index in real time. It's updating as we speak, and it's awesome to see everything working. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this project and you want to see more like it, definitely subscribe and hit that notification bell. Other than that, feel free to like this video or leave a comment if you have any ideas that you'd like to see in a future video. I'm Ethan with Synthetic Programming, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace, guys.